If, uh, if you're one of the ones that are going to bed, let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. You're going to bed early. All right. Who's staying up to watch the ball drop? All right. Who hopes they make it to watch the ball drop? You're just like, I'm hoping I make it that, that, that far. All right. Well, if you're ready for 2019, let me hear you make a little bit of noise. Like, let's come on 2019, 2018. You can get out of here. Hey, I'm looking forward to uh, today and next Sunday as well. We're doing this special two-part uh, message series called Blueprint for a New Year. And uh, next Sunday, we're going to be talking about what kind of things can you do to set yourself up for your best year ever. Really excited for, for next Sunday. The Sunday after that, we're going to be getting a, a brand new message series uh, for the new year called Selfless, Selfless, not Selfish, Selfless, it's the opposite. And uh, the tagline is Unleash Your Inner Hero. And so we're going to be talking about uh, what that looks like to live into the fullness that you were created to live into. And I, I cannot wait for this series. And just to start off with a lot of fun, uh, on January 13th, we're going to have some of your kids' favorite superheroes here out in the lobby after each service for photo shoots with, you know, with, with each of those heroes. Why not, right? We're going to have some fun with that. So we're going to have a superhero party on January 13th. All right, you want to be here. You want to have your kids here, grandkids. It's going to be a lot of fun uh, that day, okay? And uh, today is, is, of course, a, a special day. And I'm looking forward to where we're headed uh, today with, um, with, with, the, with the message. Uh, we're going to look at how to bridge the gap between 2018 and 2019. We're going we're gonna to be getting into that. All right, this is a, kind of that weird week between Christmas and New Year's, and I saw a lot of people on social media this week, like, what do I do? Like, what, what, what am I supposed to be doing with, with this week? Maybe you have some time off, or maybe you're working harder, depending on you know, the, the line of work that you're in. And what we're going to be talking about is what do we do with the various areas of our lives before we move into the new year? And uh, this, this week, and especially these, these couple days as we're heading into the new year, it, I, I'm always reminded I'm always reminded of January 1st, uh, 2004. At the time, my wife and I were living in uh, northern Ohio, and uh, it was uh, on January 1st, 2004, at 12.15 a.m. that Katie and I became accident report number one in Richland County, Ohio. Uh, we were spending the, the evening at a, some friend's house, and then as soon as the ball dropped, we hopped in the car, and we're driving back to uh, our house. And uh, as we were doing that, there's this long, narrow bridge that we've got to uh, we've got to cross. And as we were uh, approaching the bridge, we could see on the other side of the bridge that there was another car that pulled out. When the car pulled out, it pulled out really wide and kind of slow. If you ever noticed that before, and uh, we we also especially noticed it because when they pulled out onto the bridge coming our direction, they were in our lane. Like this, this isn't right. <laughs> this is something, something's off here. And as we started going across the bridge, they started accelerating, but they did not move back into their lane. And so unsure of what to do, we moved into their lane. And when we moved into their lane, they thought it was a good idea to move back into their lane as well. Then we moved back into our lane and they moved back into our lane as well. And so not really sure what to think of what's going on. Is this a drunk driver? Is this somebody that's malicious? What's, what's going on as we're moving across this long, narrow bridge? And we kind of stayed in our lane hoping they'd move back. And at the very last second, because they weren't moving, we switched back to their lane, which caused them to switch back to their lane. But we had just gotten barely past them. When they came by, they hit the, the, the right passenger side of our car and spun us around. And both cars stopped immediately, but very quickly the other car sped off and we of course pulled off the bridge and called 911 and a police officer came and said congratulations your uh, accident report number one for the year in our county and oh by the way there's other accidents happening down the road as well evidently it was a drunk driver who was having several different um, uh, hit and runs as they were moving down the road and I remember when Kate and I we, we, we laid our heads uh, on our pillows that night and we were still in shock of what just happened and how did we make it out of that and you know, what are we going to, you know, what are we going to do? And how are they going to find this guy? Is he still out there? Like, what's, what's going on? And I remember that night, I made a promise to myself and moreover to God that, that I would never waste a year. I just remember, you know, this is how our year began. And uh, I'm not going to take it for granted that God saw us through this. And every day and every year is a miracle. And I, I don't want to waste it. I don't know about you, but I don't want to waste 2019. I don't know how your 2018 has been. But I don't, I don't want to waste 2019. I want to make it my absolute best year ever. And I, I'm praying the same for you as well. And it, the only thing I know that we can do at this point to set up 2019 to be our best year ever is to finish out 2018 well. Now, I've, I know we've only got a few moments left. There's only a couple days left in this. But I think there's some things that we can do to set us up for success. And in fact, here, here's what I know. We're going to be talking about this today. Usually what we do is we take the various facets of our life in uh, one year, and we just transfer them to the next. 
That seems like a reasonable thing to do, right? Because we just kind of start the new year. And so we bring all of us into the new year. The problem is even when we make resolutions, that there's some brokenness that's in our lives. And what we often do is we just transfer the brokenness from one year into the next. And what we're going to be talking about today is what if instead of transferring our brokenness, we allow God to do some transformation in us? What if there's various areas of our lives where God wants to transform us before we move it forward? We're going to be talking about that, transfer or transform. Some years ago, I came across a a psalm, and it's helped me to see how God can uh, help us to transform our hurt. We're going to walk through it today. There's there's actually three parts to this uh, phase that's going to work us towards transforming instead of just transferring the hurt. It's Psalm 56. If you've got a Bible, you're welcome to uh, open it up. I actually brought my study Bible along with me. I usually don't preach from this this big old guy, so this is your first time. Don't be afraid, all right? I'm not throwing this this thing at you. This is my study Bible. I want to read from it uh, here today, but we're going to have it on the screens as well. And Psalm 56 is a psalm of lament, psalm of Lament. Now, I know that doesn't sound like a good thing as we're heading into a new year, but I promise you there's something powerful within it. In fact, within a a psalm of lament, there's often a journey towards healing that happens within the psalm. So Psalm 56, we're going to work through most of the psalm uh, here today. Just the first several verses here as we get started. It says this, Be gracious to me, O God, for man tramples upon me. All day long an attacker oppresses me. My enemies trample on me all day long, for many attack me proudly. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you, in God whose word I praise. In God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? As he's speaking plainly to God and he's beginning to express his hurt, this is David. He's also in the middle of it, stopping just to say, even though I'm speaking plainly, I'm expressing my hurt to you, God. I'm also expressing that I'm not going anywhere. Like, I believe in you. You are with me every step of the way. Then he goes back into it. All day long they injure my cause. All their thoughts against me were evil. They stir up strife. They lurk. They watch my steps as they have waited for my life. For their crime will they escape in wrath. Cast down the peoples, O God. David's going after him. He's literally being pursued right now. He says, you have kept count. You have kept count of my tossings. Now I think that's a, a really good word. This idea of tossings to describe our troubles. They're the things that keep us up at night. There's tossing and turning as we try to desperately sleep. And the first step, the first part of this phase of walking towards this healing, allowing God to transform so we don't just transfer our brokenness, is simply this. Would you write it down on your papers? We just have blank lines today. You can write down whatever notes you want, but I've got a few things to, to encourage you to write down. The first one is this. Tell God what keeps you up at night. Tell God what keeps you up at night. You're just speaking plainly to God. You're expressing your hurt to God. That's exactly what David is doing. He's literally being pursued by an enemy, and he's expressing the anxiety that it's causing him. And you and I, we're going to experience hardship in 2019. We know that. We've lived long enough to experience that. But for most of us, we bottle up the hardship. We isolate ourselves. At best, we might tell somebody else or complain to somebody else about it. But David is saying, why don't you tell God about it? Because he's the only one that can really do something about it anyway. Express your hurt. Tell God plainly what is hurting. And what you're doing is you start bringing the dark part of your lives into the light of God. Now, for a lot of us, we don't deal with hurt in a healthy or helpful way. And what I've learned is uh, the, the, the best way we can begin that process is to begin recognizing the source. Where is the hurt coming from? Because this, this is important. Because I think for a lot of us, we're, we're, we do a, a poor job of understanding where the hurt is coming from. Like it's almost as if we got a broken arm and we're going to the veterinarian, right? We're not even starting in the right place. If, if there's something's going wrong, we might uh, get out of or change a relationship. Or we might change a job. Or we might even change churches. And none of those are necessarily a bad thing, but the question is, where do you begin? Uh, What what if you just began in the presence of Jesus and let him speak into it first before you transfer the hurt forward? Just get in the presence of Jesus and talk plainly to him. I I think brokenness and hurt comes from a lot of different places, but let me just point out three areas of our lives that I think we often will have uh, different uh, pains and hurts that, that linger in our lives. The the first one is simply this. You can write this down if it's helpful. And it's unrepentant behaviors. Unrepentant behaviors. Now that's kind of a big word. And it's simply this. There's there's things you're 
doing. There's things you've done, and you haven't repented. Repent is a, a biblical word for turn. You haven't turned away from them. You haven't given them to God. Let's let's say it could be it could be like this that maybe uh, in intimacy in your life, there's something with your body or the things you're looking at that is not the best that God has for you. It could be an area of, of intimacy in your life. It could even be in your finances, that you're not handling your finances the absolute best way that, that, that God has for you. And so what do you do with these unrepentant behaviors? Now, no one likes to be in this category, right? But the truth is, a lot of us are here. There are some different things we are doing in our lives. And they may not even be recognized or uncovered until we start talking plainly expressing our hurt to God, and he might reveal it. See, a lot of times we're like, why am I constantly going through this? Why are things like this constantly happening to me? But what if we started asking God, is there something about me that's bringing it about? God, is there a behavior that that I haven't turned from that's bringing these things into my life? The the psalmist in Psalm 139 would say, um, uh, Lord, would you would you search me? In fact, he says, search me, O God, and know my ways. In other words, he's saying, I'm opening myself up to you, God. Search me, O God, and, and, and know my ways. Try me and know my anxious thoughts and see if there's going to be any harmful ways in me. Now, what, have you ever prayed a prayer like that to God before? God, would you just, just sort of do some open heart surgery on me here right now? God, if there's ways in me that are wrong, God, would you start to write them because I want the best that you have for me. And then he goes on to say, the psalmist would say, then lead me in the everlasting way. If my ways are harmful, show me, God, reveal them to me, and then lead me in the everlasting way. Maybe you have some behaviors that you need to turn from before we head into 2019. Here's a a second area that often causes hurt, and it's this, it's unresolved pain. Unresolved pain. So in the first category, it's something you're doing, but in the second category, it's something that's been done to you. Right? You, you, didn't, you didn't ask for it, but nonetheless, it, it, it happened. It could be uh, something that happened in a relationship. You didn't want it, but somebody brought this into the, the relationship, and it, it is causing great pain for you. It could be something in your career. You didn't get the promotion. You didn't get the job. Someone maybe short-circuited you. Right? It's something that's been done to you. And for whatever reason, you haven't, you haven't resolved it. You haven't dealt with it. Maybe you've swept it under the rug. Maybe there's bitterness you've held on to. When you see that person, you just get this pit in your stomach. That, that, that's a sign that you, it, it's unresolved. You haven't allowed God into that area of your life. That's the second one, unresolved pain. Here's the third one, unmet expectations. Unmet expectations. So in the first one, it's something you might be doing. In the second category, it's something that someone did to you. But in this third category, there's nothing happening. (laughs) The things that you prayed for, the things you wanted in 2018, they haven't come about in the time frame that you wanted. Perhaps it's with your health. When it comes to your health, you thought you were going to be healthier. You thought things would move forward. Or maybe you got a surprise in 2018. Or for you, maybe it's your spirituality that you thought you'd be further along than you are right now. And you're just, you're, there's these unmet expectations, right? There's these three different areas. We can talk about unrepentant behaviors, unresolved pain, unmet expectations. And what we often do is we just take the hurt from one year and we move it into the next. What we're going to talk about today is how, how can we allow God to transform it so we don't just transfer it forward? It, it starts with talking with God about what keeps you up at night. I recently came across... Uh, story. I want to share it with you guys today. In fact, I even brought the, the book along with me. And uh, in uh, Jim Collins' uh, landmark book, Good to Great, he talks about a, an admiral named Jim Stockdale. Jim, Jim Stockdale was um, the highest ranking officer in a, in a prisoner of war camp in Vietnam. And his heroic actions within the camp uh, earned him the Medal of Honor after he uh, got out years later. And he was in the camp for eight years. And over those eight years, he was tortured some 20 times. I mean, it's, it's an incredible story if you, if you learn about it. And as he was uh, walking through this, there were things that he learned. There were things that he taught others. And one day, Jim Collins got the privilege to interview Admiral Stockdale. And he said, how did you make it through? How did you make it through? Some didn't, some didn't. How did you make it through? And I, and I love what Stockdale said, so I brought it along with me. It says this, I never lost faith in the end of the story. I never lost faith in the end of the story. I never doubted that not only that I would get out, but also that I would prevail in the end and turn the experience into the defining event of my life, which in retrospect, I would not trade. Think about that for a moment. 
Now, this is Collins talking. He says, I didn't say anything for minutes, and we continued the slow walk toward where we were going, and Stockdale limping and his arc swinging his stiff leg that had never fully recovered from the repeated torture said this. After about 100 meters of silence, I ask, who didn't make it out? And this was Stockdale's response. Oh, that's easy. The optimist. The optimist, he said, I, I don't understand. Now completely confused, given what he had just said 100 meters earlier. The optimist, oh, they were the ones who would say, we're going to be out by Christmas, and then Christmas would come, and Christmas would go. Then they said, we're going to be out by Easter, and Easter would come, and Easter would go, and then Thanksgiving, and then Christmas again, and they died of a broken heart. In other words, they weren't, they weren't confronting the facts. Another, another long pause and more walking, and then he turned to me and said, this, this, this is what I want to hear. This is a very important lesson. You must never confuse faith that you will prevail in the end which you can never afford to lose. Right? So you've got to hold on to the faith that I'm going to get better. I'm going to move forward. Then he goes on to say this. With the discipline to confront the most brutal facts of your current reality, whatever they might be. Now think about that. At the same time, you're holding these two sort of posing poles at the, at the same moment. Of, I'm, I'm going to get out. I, at some point, I'm going to prevail in the end. I'm going to make it the defining experience of my life but I'm also going to confront the brutal facts that I'm in prison. This isn't the best place for me. And I want you to think about that for a moment. And whatever situation you might be going through, whatever those categories, whatever, whatever you might be facing, whatever you've been, uh, the, the hurts you've been transferring forward, what if you today made a resolution like, I'm going to get better. I'm going to move forward. We're going to talk about that in a moment while also confronting the brutal facts. You're, you're bringing both of these two things together at the exact same time. This is happening. This is real. I'm not going to get better unless I first tell God that this is what's happening. So why don't, why don't we do that? Why, why, why don't we take a moment and, and talk with God? This is what's happening in my life. Where is your hurt coming from? Is it an unrepentant behavior? Is it unresolved pain. Maybe it's unmet expectations. I, I don't know what it is for you. Maybe when it comes to intimacy, you say that intimacy is lacking in my life. You just need to tell that to God. You just need to be honest with him. Have, a, have an honest conversation with God. Maybe in your finances, there's even just thinking about finances in the moment right now causes you anxiety. You're like, I don't know how this is ever going to move forward. I don't know how I'm going to get out of the debt. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this situation. Talk plainly to God about it. Maybe when it comes to relationships, there's some hurt or there's some pain, or maybe there's relationships that are missing or lacking in your life. Maybe when it comes to your career, you're, you're, you're not advancing the way that you want. Maybe there's things that you want to come about that you've been waiting for a long time and they're not coming about. Would you talk plainly? Would you talk plainly with God about it? When it comes to your spirituality, maybe you'd say, God, I, I thought by this time I'd be further along. So, God, I, I need you to speak to me as to why I'm not moving forward at the pace that I want. Or maybe, God, just my health. There's, there's something going on. It's not going away. God, I need this to get better. You're just talking plainly to God. What is it for you? In this first category, you would tell God what keeps you up at night. Because when you share it with God, that's the first act. That's the first step towards healing, towards getting better in your life. Number one is tell God what keeps you up at night. Here's number two. Would you write this down? Determine to move forward. Determine to move forward. Determine to move forward. In other words, my past won't keep me from my future. I want us to keep reading for just a moment. Just one verse in Psalm 56. David says this, you've kept count of my tossings. You've put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? I think there's a lot of times that when we hurt, we're convinced that God has left us. And David is resolved to remember that God is intimately acquainted with all of his problems. That despite the hurt, he's not going to blame it on God. Despite the hurt, he's not going to act like God isn't right there beside him. Despite the hurt he's facing right now, he's, he's not going to forget that God has been with him every step of the way in the past as well. He's saying, this is who God is. This is what God does. He is with me. And this is important. He says that while I was tossing, that God was right there beside me. He was counting every toss. He was, just, he was right there with me. And he wrote them down in his book. I think there's a closeness here. 
you know, if, if, if Katie's having a sleepless night, I have a sleepless night, right? We're, we're, we're right there together. And what David's saying is that while I was having a sleepless night, God was right there saying, I'm awake with you. And I want to bring relief to what's keeping you awake at night. I want to bring relief from your stress. And then David says something really interesting. He says, you've collected all my tears in a bottle. Now that sounds like a strange thing, so let's get into it for just a moment. There's an ancient ritual of a collecting tears when you would mourn. It was just a little bottle. It was almost like a little vial. And they would literally collect their tears while they were mourning. They would, they would collect them and they would hang on to them because it was really important that while the tears remained in the bottle, it was a season of mourning. It was a, it was a season of grief. It was a season allowing yourself to get better. Usually when we hurt, we just sort of move forward, right? We just, we just transfer into the future. And what David is saying is that God actually collects your tears in a bottle. God knows you so well that he's right beside you. He's collecting your tears and he's saying, if you will sit with me, I will bring healing as you mourn, as you grieve, that when you are ready to move into the future, I'll be there with you because I've been doing a healing work in you all along. Right? David was saying we, we need to allow time for our wounds to heal. See, in the process of sharing our hurt and entrusting new areas of our lives to God, we're bringing the light of God into an area of our life that maybe hasn't been there before or has been lacking for a while. He's saying, I'm, I'm speaking it plainly to God because he's right here beside me. Maybe you would say today to God, God, I'm confused. I'm, I'm angry. Maybe I feel alone. And Lord, I need you to sort out and heal all this for me. And you can't rush past this point. This is, this is the point of the Psalm of Lament that you need time with God, that you're, you're, you're saying to God, God, I want to get better. God, please heal this area of my life. Right? It's trusting that as I continually submit myself to God, that he's going to do a healing work in me because eventually the tears would evaporate. And when the tears evaporated, it was time to move forward. The season of mourning was over. The season of grief was over. Right? And God's saying, I'm going to move you forward. And some of you today need to sit with God. That there's some kind of a hurt, and if you're not careful, you're going to bring the hurt, and you're going to put it right in 2019, and you can predict where you're going to be at the end of 2019. Right? We, 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 you've, you've played that record before. If you're under a certain age, records are something we had back before tapes and CDs. And, right? But you need to sit with God. There's, there's a time of, Lord, I, I'm, I'm not well. God, I'm going to be honest with you. This is keeping me up at night. Or this is, this is causing anxiety. And you're allowing God to do only the work that he can do. So you don't just transfer the hurt forward. Eventually the tears would evaporate. And it was time to get up. And it was time to move forward with God. God, you're doing a healing work in my life. I'm not going to stay in this hospital bed forever. I'm going to get up and I'm going to move forward. And here's number three. Number three is this. Trust God with your future. Trust God with your future. You're believing that God is for you, that God wants goodness in every area of your life, that as you entrust those areas of your life to God, that he's going to bring health and wellness into it. Let's, let's finish out the psalm here into verse 11. It says this, then my enemies will turn back in the day when I call. This I know that God is for me. Do you know that? Maybe you know it intellectually, but David's saying like in my heart, in my soul, I know that he's for me regardless of what I see happening around me. Right? This I know that God is for me. In God whose word I praise, in the Lord whose word I praise, in God I trust. I'm not trusting in my own strength. I'm not trusting in the strength of someone else. I'm not waiting on someone else to get me better. No, no, no. I'm going to trust in God alone. I shall not be afraid. What can man, what can man do to me? See, David has complete confidence that God wants good things for him. That despite the challenges, goodness is his future. As I was Studying this week in my study Bible, I looked down in the margins and there was this note and I was too good not to bring along. Let me read it for us. It says, many take this to be an individual lament. In other words, they, they look at it and they say it's, it's, it's only lamenting that there's no healing that comes out of it. But then the, the, the author of the, you know, of the margin says this, 
but it could also be a psalm of anticipated thanksgiving. Think about that for a moment. What if the challenge you're facing today, you started facing it with anticipated thanksgiving? And I'm walking through a challenge now, but because I know God is good and is for me, I'm already giving thanks because I know he's going to bring me out of it. I'm confronting the brutal facts while at the same time knowing in the end I'm going to prevail because God is for me. It could also be a psalm of anticipated thanksgiving. I like that. The description of troubles and prayer is taken up. In other words, it's overcome with the gratitude that God has heard and he will act. God can hear me. He's going to act as he's acted in the past. God has been for me before. God has never let me down. So this challenge is not going to change my belief in that, that he's going to move me forward because he's done it before. He's done it before. What if you're walking through your health issue with an anticipated thanksgiving that God is for me? I, I've spent time, I've, I've told him what's going on and I'm allowing him to do a work. When it comes to my spirituality, I'm trusting that God clearly wants better for me than where I am today. That as I submit myself to him, he's, he's going to move me forward. That even in the area of, of intimacy in my life, that as I submit, as I do things God's way and I trust him, he's going to bring health and healing. I, I believe that God has a, a, a purpose for me. He, he designed me with a purpose. He wants to bring it about fully. Uh, whatever's happening in the world around me, at my job or at my work, I'm going to trust my career to God and not to men. I believe that God has good even for my finances, that as I handle my finances God's way, the only good can come. Now, that doesn't mean that things won't happen come to the Lunsford house in the last month, all right? There's been a plumbing issue, an electrical issue, washer has gone out, furnace has gone out. Anybody wants to come help us fix it, just let me know. But that's, listen, but can I just tell you there's significant peace in it that hasn't always been there in our lives? Because I'm just trusting as we're handling things God's way, he's got us. He's got us. Maybe you don't have that peace right now. You can. Or even in your relationships, that God wants good relationships. Relationships. That as I bring about my best into the world, God's going to bring about the relationships that I need. See, we're not just sort of taking 2018 and putting it into 2019, but we're talking to God about the hurts, allowing him to do a healing work so that he can move us forward. I, I almost didn't bring this part, but I wanted to share it. There's a, there's a lament in progress. It's in the book of Lamentations, which is a book only of lament. So if you're having a really great day and you want to be brought down, go read go read this book. If you're having a bad day, it may not be the best one for you, but there's an arc that, that, that happens here. Most likely it was Jeremiah that was writing this. And he, he says this. Now, he, he gets real with God. right? Here, here's the, I'm going to tell God what keeps me up at night. Here he is. It's not on the screen. You can just listen. I am the man who has seen affliction under the rod of his wrath. Who is, who, who is he talking about? Whose wrath? He's talking about God. That's what he says. He has driven me and brought me into darkness without any light. Surely against me he turns his hand again and again the whole day long. Who's he talking about? God. He has made my flesh and my skin waste away. He has broken my bones. He has besieged and enveloped me with bitterness and tribulation. God can handle whatever you want to tell him, all right? Jeremiah is living proof. Whatever you've got to tell God, he, he can handle it. He has made my teeth grind on gravel. Don't sit on that one too long. And made me cower in ashes. My soul is bereft of peace. I have forgotten what happiness is. Some of you today need to tell God plainly, God, this is what's keeping me up at night. And if you want to get mad at God a little bit, that's okay. He can handle it. He goes on to say this, but this I call to mind and therefore I have hope. In other words, he's saying, I'm going to determine to move forward. I'm not going to forget who God is. Despite how I feel right now, I know who he is. I know he's been for me and I know he's going to be for me again. He goes on to say this, and here's the third part. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. Now, you've maybe heard this verse before, but you didn't know all the verses that came before it. He goes, like, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So what's Jeremiah doing? I'm trusting God with my future despite my current challenge. Despite what I'm facing today, I'm trusting Him. Now here's what's amazing about this word new. I, 
I need you to get out your phone. I know you don't usually do that in church, but go ahead and get out your phone. There, you can you can participate and follow along. It's gonna be really simple and easy. Get out your phone, open up your calculator app on your phone, okay? If I can play along for a moment. As you do that, let me explain this. Here's what's interesting about the word new here. Now, when we look at his mercies are new every morning, what we hear at best is we hear it, God gives me the same new mercy every day. That God has Chad mercy, right? God has you mercy. Put it, put your name in there. And he just gives it to me every day. Which how, how great would that be? That every day that God just has something set aside for Chad. But that's not what it's saying. God has a completely new mercy for me every day. So here's what I need you to do. I need to take you. you get, get, everybody's got the calculators out, right? So take your age times 365. Your age times 365. Now add in 100, okay? Because everybody's had a birthday this year and you're, you're somewhere past your birthday. Let's say 100 days. That number is the number of times that God has given you a brand new mercy. For every unrepentant behavior, for every unresolved pain, for every unmet expectation, completely new for you. God wants you to allow him to do a transforming work so that 2019 is your best year ever. But it has to start with you just getting honest with God. What's he going to tell you? i got something new for you today. So Father, we thank you that you are a good and faithful and merciful God. That regardless of the challenges that we face, regardless of what we've even thought of you, you have remained good and merciful and faithful. And as we're praying, I, I want to give you an opportunity to respond to God in this moment. If you've got a healing work that needs to happen right now, then come on, let's do some business with God. With our eyes closed and our heads bowed, if you're here today and you need God to do a healing work in you, I'm not going to ask you to come to the front. I'm not going to ask you to stand up. I do not want to embarrass you. I just want to give you an opportunity to say to God, God, I need a healing work in me. Would you just raise your hand up right now? I'd love to have the privilege of praying for you. Just raise it up high for a moment. Anybody else? You can put your hands down. And here's what I want to invite you to pray. You don't have to pray it out loud, but just in your own heart. But you speak plainly to God. Which of those areas say, God, this is, this has got to change. God, there's a, a behavior in my life. There's an unresolved pain. Lord, there's unmet expectations. And Lord, today I'm hurting. God, I don't want to move into 2019 until I allow you to do some work in 2018 first. Father, what I know is that as we speak plainly to you, that we can trust you with our future. Just as Jeremiah said, your mercies are new every day. Brand new. Completely new. It's not the same mercy from yesterday. It's not the mercy from 10 years ago. But you've got something new for us today. So God, we want to live into it. God, we know that when we wake up tomorrow and the next day, you have something new for us. So God, we're asking that you would do your healing work in us today. As we're praying, still with our eyes closed for just a moment, I, I, I wonder if somebody today, maybe you walked in here today and you're coming to check out church, or maybe coming with a friend, or not even sure why you're here, but you would say that today you want to walk out of here knowing you have a relationship with God. You, you want to walk out of here knowing that you, you want to be completely new with Him how this works. Jesus died on the cross for you. All of us have had behaviors that have gone astray from God's best. What the Bible says is as we did that, we deserve the punishment because God had best for us and we went a different direction. But here's the good news. Here's the gospel. Jesus went to the cross to die for you so that he could take the punishment and you'd never have to face it. All you have to do is say, Jesus, today I believe that you died on the cross for me. Lord, I believe you rose up from the dead to give me new life. And you have new life and your past is forgiven. 
I'm not going to ask you to come up to the front. I'm not going to ask you to stand up. I don't want to embarrass you. But eyes closed and heads bowed. If that's you today, you want to have a new relationship with Jesus. You want to walk out of here a brand new person today. Start 2019 brand new. Would you just raise your hand up high? I'd love to have the privilege of praying with you today. That's wonderful. Anybody else? If that's you, would you just would you pray with me? You have to pray out loud. Just pray silently in your own heart and say, God, thank you for your love. Just pray that. Would you say, God, I know that I've gone astray, but I thank you that Jesus took my punishment on the cross. I believe that I'm fully forgiven of my past. Lord, I thank you that he died on the cross, but he didn't stay there. He, he rose up from the dead to give me new life, and today I believe that Jesus did that, and I believe that you are giving me new life now. So would you just pray something like this? Would you say, God, would you help me to walk every single day from here forward in you? God, help me to live transformed. So God, we thank you. Lord, we thank you that you love us right where we are, that you love us too much to leave us there. You've got something new today, the next day. God, help us to walk with you. To your son's name we pray. Amen and amen. Hey, let's put our hands together and celebrate those who are trusting God and moving forward with him.